Peggy has asked me to tell you about my experience in the 1906 San Francisco earthquake and fire. I was a student in the university in Berkeley at that time, and it was in early April. I woke up with a hearing a great bang banging around. My bed was rolling across the floor, and I saw a chair with my clothes on fall over completely. And then I looked out of the window and I could see a neighbor's chimney falling down. But things where the building was rocking, so it scared me, of course. So I decided it must be, I must get out of the house. So I tried to go downstairs and out the back door. But as I was going down the stairs, it was hard to see where the stairs would be because they kept moving so that I had trouble in finding, knowing where to put my feet so the stair would be there. But I did finally get down. I suppose more or less fell down. And I went out the back door because I had only my pajamas on. And uh, I tried to get the back door open. It is stuck. And I pulled and pulled and pulled on it. And just then there was a great crash outside. And I saw that the chimney, brick chimney, had fallen down there. So I think maybe... I might have been under it, but something kept me from it. Well, <clears throat> then, of course, uh, I had to go to the university that morning because there was a military inspection of our naval RO of our ROTC program. I was uh, played the slide trombone in a band, and we had to go there and uh, march and do all kinds of things. And as we were working there, we could see across the bay to San Francisco, it's only about six or seven miles, great clouds of smoke. And every little while we'd hear an awful explosion as the firemen over there were dynamiting buildings in order to stop the fire because they had no water. Their water mains were broken. So, well, at least we did our inspection of arms that morning. But just before we left at noon, the commandant came in and said, uh, I want to tell you that there's a terrible fire over in San Francisco and they're desperately in need of help. And we'd like to, we'll have no exercises this afternoon. You're all excused. And we strongly recommend that you volunteer your services to help the people get out of San Francisco, whatever may be needed. So I had my lunch and I went across on the train and ferry and I was stationed at the ferry building. And what I did there was simply to help people to get away from San Francisco. They didn't know where to go. They were bewildered. And as I, I noticed as I looked up the street, within a block there, the buildings were burning, and there was a great crack in the, in the road, or oh, a deep, uh, more than a crack, a gully almost, crevice where it had been opened up from the earthquake. Well, that was, uh, I went over and back, I guess, for the next week or 10 days, helping as I could there. It was a terrible experience, but one that, well, I suppose, did it really help somebody. We, uh, let's see, that's about all my experience there. Our university was uh, excused. We stopped because uh, they had to turn the hospital the gymnasium into a hospital to help the people that had been hurt or something there in Berkeley. And I was on a guard there of the streets for a while, but that was all. Then I went back 
to my folks who were living in Morgan Hill, down, down the peninsula quite a ways, and spent the summer there. And every little while there'd be a repetition of the quake, even down there. Really strong quakes that would scare a person, but they were nothing like the big one. I guess that's all. Oh, Peggy asked me to tell you that what I saw when I was there in the, in the ferry building, well, you see, people were so badly flustered they didn't know exactly what they were doing. And I suppose many of them would grab whatever they could see when they were forced to leave their burning building. Uh, one woman, I remember, was just carrying a little birdcage with a canary in it. Nothing else, just that, and she was bewildered. Another person I know was a man who had a trunk, an old, big, round-top trunk. He was pulling over the cobblestones with a rope attached to one of the handles. And uh, I went up to help him, of course, and he said, I have everything I own in this trunk. And I do hope you will help me put it on the on the ferry boat, which I did, of course. He said, you know, I have lots of money in this thing, but he didn't show me any. This is Grandma. <laughs> They're laughing at me. Well, I, I, Peggy says you want to hear what I had, my experience at the, oh, it was a big earthquake. I was a senior in high school. And that morning, at 5 o'clock, the earthquake shook me out of bed, practically. And my father got up and just put on his trousers and went out the back door as fast as he could because he was chief of the volunteer fire department. And he said, everything, there's this terrible earthquake. People are going to need help. And he was so right. Every big building in our town, I was born in Hollister, and that little town is in the the end of the Santa Clara Valley, called San Benito County, and it is right on the earthquake fault. So the, the earthquake was very, very strong in our town. Every big building went down just a patch, a, a patch of rubble. And my, our high school was an old school, and it was so badly damaged, we couldn't go back to school. And of course, they did, we were delighted. And so, uh, what to do? We had, it was the 18th of April, and school was supposed to run until the middle of June, but our principal said, we can't have any more school. So I had a friend who lived way up by the Pinnacles, which is way in the Gabaland Range in our county, south of my town, my little town of Hollister. And she invited me to come up there. Her father was a big uh, rancher, and we both had horses, and we, each morning, would herd the cattle. Now, that was my first experience with, and the only one, with herding cattle. But it was so much fun, and I was so glad that the school was let out. Didn't have to go back. I wasn't glad about the earthquake, nor the uh, fire or anything of that sort, and or the people that were hurt, or the people that had lost their homes. But I was delighted to not have to go to school. You know, in this little town of ours, we were on a, a kind of a, 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 just a short railroad from uh, the north, and we had to change trains in this little town of Gilroy. And we had no communication, no, all wires were down, we couldn't, and the people in the town had relatives and friends in San Francisco and places like that, they couldn't get any word in or out for a number of days. And when they finally got a train to come down, it was packed with people who had nothing, who had lost their homes, the houses had burned in San Francisco, and or lost relatives killed in the earthquake and fire, and practically everybody in town was down to the station when that train came in, and everybody did something to help them and to try to get them to, uh, to be more comfortable, and uh, it, the people were lovely about it, but it was a very sad time. It takes some time to begin to uh, 
to build your home again and find your place after the awful tragedy like the, the earthquake and fire. You're a grand old flag, you're a high-flying flag, and forever in peace may you wave. You're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. Every heart beats true for the red, white, and blue, where there's never a boast or brag. But should old acquaintance be forgot, keep your eye on the grand old flag. Oh!